What's up guys, CG Sparky here and today I'm going to show you how to model and sculpt in the style of Overwatch using 3ds Max for block out and ZBrush to sculpt in the details. So we'll jump into 3ds Max and you can see I've blocked out a very basic pillar uh, just using some uh, cubes within 3ds Max and I'll just go through them all here uh, and I've kept them all separate and exported it out uh, ready for ZBrush. Okay, so jumping into ZBrush, uh, I've imported my pillar up at the top and I'm going to drag it in and tap T to enable sculpting. Uh, so you can see I've still got all the individual cubes. Uh, I'm just going to change the material uh, to matte cap grey, just got a nicer look. And I'm going to split groups. Uh, now I am using a custom interface and custom brushes, uh, I've included a link in the description to the brushes uh, but everything you can see on my custom interface can be found down here on the right hand side uh, or in the top menus uh, so everything here will be in this list here uh, so I'm gonna group split I'm gonna click always okay and you can see that this is split every cube into its own subtool so for the purposes of keeping this tutorial quite short I'm just gonna sculpt one uh, off the blocks uh, to show you the techniques behind it and then uh, I'll fast forward uh, to show you the end result. So I'll just pick maybe this cube here uh, and I'm going to solo it. So first off I'm going to dynamesh it to 512. Uh, you can see it keeps the cube shape um, but it has a lot more polygons. Oh, that seems to have dynamished it to 128, so I'll stick up to 512. There we go. So I'm going to go to my brushes and select the Clip Curve brush. So by holding Control and Shift, you get this line here. And then by holding Alt, sorry, by holding Space, you can drag it over. And I'm just going to cut off the corners as close to the 45 degrees as you can get. Now you'll notice with the clip curve brush that the shadow is on one side. This shows you what side is going to be cut off. Uh, so you can rotate it around and you can see if you do it this side your model all messes up. So make sure that the shadow is always on the side you want it to be on. Okay, so with those sides, you want to go around to the opposite side and do the same thing, try line it up as best you can. It doesn't matter too much how accurate it is because we're going in and sculpting the details later on. Um, okay, and that one there. And now, onto the top. And you just want to clip off a wee bit of these corners as well. About there. Okay, so here's the final result with all the sides clipped. So, at this point I like to divide it up slightly uh, by going into Geometry and clicking Divide. Now, we are already at 287,000 polygons, uh, but ZBrush, doesn't matter what your polygon count is, uh, you can go as high as you like, um, as long as your computer can handle it. So, now on to the next set of brushes. So I'm going to be using AJ Polish. Uh, this is a custom brush which is in the description uh, and I'm also going to be using H Polish as well which is a brush already within ZBrush. So I'm actually going to hold shift and tap on H Polish. You can do this by pressing B and holding shift and selecting which brush you want in here. So you can see that this actually swaps between the two brushes uh, which is just a lot quicker. So using AJ Polish I'm going to keep my brush size about 15, 16. Um, I'm just going to tap and pad down these corners a bit. And then I'm going to hold down shift for H polish and just lightly tap them in to kind of round them down a little bit to create a harder side. Now you can see the I could probably do to divide once more just to get those slightly crisper details 
So I'm going to do this to all the sides. Uh, I'll probably speed up the video here and uh, continue afterwards. Okay, so with all the sides um, polished down, um, you can see it's already starting to look uh, a bit like that Overwatch style. So with your H polish brush, uh, you want to bring up the size slightly, uh, hold down shift to activate it, and you want to go down these sides a bit and just push out little bits of detail, like so, and maybe a wee one down here as well. And you want to go through your all the edges and just pick a bit to to push out. So I'm going really lightly here and just slowly pushing this out. Okay, so once you've got all the sides, you'll see this is starting to look pretty good. So I'm going to take off the dynamic solo and you'll see how that looks with the rest of the blocks. Now, just for time's sake, I'm going to delete these two blocks on top. Uh, and yeah, for time, you can just duplicate it and drag them up just so you get a, an idea of how this is going to look overall. Now I, I would recommend sculpting each of these individually uh, as you can get a lot more different shapes and more interesting shapes as well. You can see there is obviously repetition here. You could rotate it around uh, to get rid of that uh, but for time's sake I'm just going to keep it as is. So onto the details. Um, for these I like to go in with the AJ chip brush uh, and drop the intensity right down to about 20 and just drag in a couple of little dots here and there on your stones. Now you can go as many or little as you want, uh, you don't want to put too many in or it'll start to look, give it that kind of cheese look, but just a few can help to define the rock a little bit. And make sure on every on every one of your bricks it's in a different position uh, so that you don't get any repetition. Um, and you can already see how that's starting to look. Now, with the H polish brush, I've gone quite deep into the edges, uh, cutting out quite a lot of detail. If you're looking for a slightly more subtle look, just you can. When you're using the clip curve brush at the start, make sure you don't cut too much off. I maybe went slightly too big with it, but I like the exaggerated look. Um, but if you're going for more subtle, just keep that slightly smaller and watch how deep you're going with your H polish brush. So I'm going to finish this up and show you the final result. Uh, and I'm going to fast forward the video from here. Okay, so as you can see, uh, that's all the sculpting done. 
Now you can add in some little details that like you could add in like wee chips and splits, cracks in the rocks. Um, but just a wee addition of these wee uh, AJ chip uh, brush insets just give it a much more rock look. So I also like to change my material to or it was Matt Cap Sculpt Day. So this just gives you a very flat look, um, which is perfect for rocks. It means you can see the details really well. You're not distracted by any reflections and shines, and it kind of almost gives you a kind of hand-painted feeling, uh, which is very Blizzard, uh, and lets you see if there's any imperfections in what you've sculpted as well. Uh, so that is it for the how to sculpt and model in the Overwatch style. Um, I'm hoping to bring out a video soon on how to get this down to the low poly stage uh, using probably Topo Gun to retopologize. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.